Good afternoon, people watch MS65, Lisa Boyce. Let me give you a verse of scripture. It is actually out of Romans 14, 11. And it says, For as it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess. Either you're going to do that on your way to heaven or you're going to do that on your way to hell. But it's going to be done. It's best to do it now. Just saying. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, period. Not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his blood, for all of your sins, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is literally going to happen at any time. There is no doubt about it, folks. The rapture is about to take place. The end of this age of grace is over. It is closing quickly. You have to be blind and you have to not want to see what's going on. In order to not see <laughs> what's going on. And you're sealed until the day of redemption. Which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. Lead you. Guide you. Minister to you. Encourage you. Speak to you. Teach you. And change you if you let him. If you let him. So there's a lot of news. As usual. But it's unusual. Because it's not the same. Two B-52 strategic bombers. Now, this is coming in off of uh, X. It was sent to me. Two B-52 strategic bombers are heading for the Middle East. A message to Hezbollah and a real threat from the Americans, so to speak. Now, let me tell you what else is going on. Turkey is escalating military operations in, Sy in Syria. So Turkish military escalation continues in the areas of northeastern Syria controlled by the autonomous administration of North and East Syria, while the latter is determined to proceed with this announced municipal election starting June 11th. Now, I don't know what happened with that um, intercontinental ballistic missile. I don't find any news on it. I don't know whether it was a success or whether it failed. I don't know what happened. No one's saying anything. But there's another test that is scheduled for D-Day, the 6th. Which again, I said last night, I don't believe that's a test. But we shall see. Because the one thing that I'm finding this morning, Russia's awfully quiet. I mean, they are extremely quiet. There's nothing in the news this morning about Russia. <clears throat> so Turkey, it says on Monday, the internal security said that a Turkish drone targeted a car carrying members uh, in, in the city, resulting in the injury of two of them. Turkey has not commented on the latest shelling, but started on June 2nd that it, quote-unquote, neutralized members of the uh, Kurdistan uh, Workers' Party in Syria and Iraq, indicating that its operations are ongoing. Now, let me stop there and let me give you this. Now this has been revealed and this was sent to me also. 
and this came out this morning, NATO, we got all that going on. NATO is planning to get U.S. troops to the front line to fight Russia. NATO is drawing up plans to send American troops to the front lines of Europe in the event of an all-out conflict with Russia. It has been revealed. New land corridors are being carved out to quickly funnel soldiers through Central Europe without local bureaucratic uh, impediments, allowing NATO forces to pounce in in an instant should Putin devastating war in Ukraine move further west, which it is going to do, folks. Like I said before, you cannot, once this nuclear Pandora's box is open, you can't put it back together. It's not like Humpty Dumpty that fell off a wall. They could not put him back together. That's what's happening right now. They can't put this back together. There is no way they can do that. So, the plans are said to include contiguous in case of Russian bombardment, letting troops sweep into the Balkans via corridors. Now, you got <laughs> you got NATO. We don't have enough manpower, nor do we have enough weaponry, unfortunately, in the United States to do all this. But yet, he wants to put U.S. troops... On the front line to fight Russia. Then you got US B 52s flying over into Hezbollah. Then <laughs> this came out of RT. Again, if you hear a humming, that's my computer. The blowers are running over time because I got so many tabs open. Biden not ruling out boots on the ground in Taiwan. Joe Biden has declined to say how his nation would defend Taiwan from Beijing's uh, military, but would not rule out, quote unquote, putting boots on the ground on the self-administered Chinese island. How is that going to work? Folks, I hate to say it, I get the feeling the draft's coming back. And it's coming back soon. Taiwan has been backed by successive governments in Washington even after the U.S. formally recognized the People's Republic of China in 1979. The island was the last refuge of nationalist forces in the Chinese Civil War in the 1940s, and the communist government on the mainland has gradually sidelined its opponents in the international arena. Washington continued to provide Taiwan with arms and commerce opportunities, despite technically acknowledging that a single Chinese nation is represented by Beijing. So if this thing goes haywire, which it will, they're going to put boots on the ground in Taiwan also, along with, you know, what's going on with NATO also. Yeah. Now it's also been, it's, I mean, it's just so much going on right now that is is tiring. It's to the point where it's actually tiring. If, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. This thing with uh, Russia. And I believe it's going to happen at any time now. Because like I said, Russia's awfully quiet. I'm looking everywhere for news on Russia. And I can't seem to find anything. It's like they're 
very, very quiet, and that's worrisome. Very worrisome. Now, meanwhile, while all that's going on, we're not hearing from Russia, but yet this came out from London. Lebanese report London warns Beirut that Israel will launch an offensive in mid-June. I don't think it's going to be mid-June. Because technically that's a couple of weeks. Not even. It says Britain has warned Lebanon that Israel will launch a large-scale offensive in mid-June whose intent and duration are not known. And advised Beirut to listen. Listen to this advised Beirut to quote-unquote make the necessary provisions for the war, according to the Lebanese news outlet. Al-Akbar. In recent days, so it says Al-Akbar is affiliated with Hezbollah, the terror group. Now, I just did, a few minutes ago, I just said, that two B-52s are headed to the Middle East, a message to Hezbollah. Now this comes out saying that they are about to enter into an offensive being reported by London. So it says... In recent days, diplomats from various countries have warned Lebanese officials of an imminent escalation by the IDF and has underscored that the threat is serious. The paper adds that, I think the name is Barry, the Speaker of Lebanon's Parliament and Hezbollah's ally, received a phone... (laughs) received a phone call from U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hochstein last week. Hochstein reportedly told Barry that the U.S. intends to continue negotiations to achieve a solution on the Israel-Lebanon border and to reach a ceasefire in Gaza. And after that, talks will begin on the outstanding points between Israel and Lebanon. The U.S. is constantly putting words in Israel's mouth because they want, they are desperate right now. They're even trying to get Zelensky to do something because right now they're desperate because Israel's not stopping and they don't know what to do. They played all their cards, the U.S. has, and they don't know what to do. If this is true, it's not going to take the mid, the middle of June, which, again, it's in a couple of weeks, if not a week. This is going to happen sooner than what people think. I'm going to link all this in the description box, and I will keep looking to see if there's any news about Russia, and I will keep looking to see if there's any news about this ICD, ICBM that was launched, this Minuteman missile. That was launched because nothing is coming up. It wasn't, I can't find anything about it being a success. I can't find anything about it, period. It's just not there. It's just information that they did launch something this morning or last night. I don't know what. I don't know whether it was a success or not. We shall see. But in the meantime, I'm going to link all this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.